Next, I'd like to discuss the classic transshipment problem. It's a lot like the transportation problem. The only difference, really, is that now we have distribution centers. So you can kind of think of it as it's like Walmart that has their distribution centers. They ship from factories to distribution centers and then from distribution centers out to the retailers. So again, let's assume that we've got some supply at the factories, 100, 300, 300 units. Factory 1, 2, and 3, we've got the costs data, uh, the amount that it, it uh, costs to ship from the factories to the distribution centers. And for this example, let's assume that we can also ship directly from factory 3 out to retailer C. And then we've got the two distribution centers that we ship out to the, to the retailers. So um, all the supply needs to be shipped out to meet the demand. The supply in this example is equal to demand. And once again, similar to the transportation problem, we've got one variable for every, uh, every network path in the diagram. So we've got uh, six, seven, and six, six more, so 13 variables in total. And here's how we define them. Let xij equal the number of units to ship from node i to node j. So from the warehouse to the distribution center, we've got these six variables, x1d, x12d, x21d, x22d, x31d, x32d. So that, for example, is, is uh, all these variables here going into the distribution center. The next variable is the one x3c directly. And then we've got from the distribution centers out to the retailers, x1dA, x1dB, x1dC. 2DA, 2DB, and 2DC. The LP formulation looks like this. We're minimizing cost. So I didn't write the whole thing out here, but you can see that, that uh, you'd have cost coefficients for all 13 variables. Then we've got the supply constraints. There's three supply constraints for each factory. X1, 1D plus X1, 2D equals 100 and so on. And we also have the demand constraints. X1DA plus X2DA has to be equal to 300 and so on for the other ones. <clears throat> we also need to include what's known as the balancing constraints. Balancing constraints. Why do we need those? Well, that is whatever goes into a distribution center must come out. So X1, 1D plus X2, 1D plus X3, 1D has to be equal to X1, D, A plus X1, D, B plus X1, D, C. So that whatever goes in comes out. If we don't include that constraint, what could happen is you could actually ship some in there and then not ship it out of there, ship it out of here but this forces it to be balanced. Okay, I've got one question for you. How would our model change if, for instance, we could ship, transship from retailer A to retailer B? This would be like transshipping from one target location in the city to another target location. Is that possible? How does that change our model? It changes this constraint right here. X 1DA, that would be taken out from A, so we subtract it. We include the new variable, so we subtract it from this constraint, minus X AB. And also, it's going from A to B, so it would be plus X A B here. So it's coming out, whatever we ship along this path, it's coming out from A and into B. So we subtract it from the 300 here, and we add it into this constraint, because it's going into that. And we'd also have to include that variable 
uh, with the coefficient up here in the cost function. Uh, if you look on WebCT, the name of the file is Tranchex. And I believe I've got two files there, one for the uh, algebraic formulation and one for the matrix formulation.